Ian, if you're watching, get off the phone, drive home. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. I think we are live now. Uh, good to see so many familiar faces. Uh, so glad some some of you just popped in all at once. So good to see you, uh, Adam, who was here earlier, Joseph, Ian, and Brandon. Oh, and Donnie and Diana. So what is up, you guys? Um, yeah, I've been wanting to do this dream for a while. Um, I've been waiting for this Balboa Rye, which Ian Grace graciously sent to me. So um, with the holidays and stuff, it just didn't work out. So finally worked it out where we could both be, be around to ship it and receive it. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I want to review that for you guys, um, as well as a few different single barrel store picks of New Riff, um, the bourbon. So we don't have store picks of the rye here yet. Uh, it's just the bourbon, but I have a couple from some bourbon groups, and then I have one from Adam, who is was here. He 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 needs to show back up before I review his whiskey. Um, it's his pick from the Nashville Bourbon Company or Nashville Bourbon Society, and it's their Riff Busters pick. So I have not tasted this one yet. So I'm really excited to open that one. But I want to review the Balboa Rye first, especially since oh Adam is here. Okay, but I do want to review the Balboa Rye mainly because I've been like itching to open this bottle not gonna lie i opened it a couple days ago but i i don't know if you can tell but i <laughs> i'm coming down with a co pretty bad cold right now so i can still taste i made sure that i did some taste testing to make sure i can still taste so i just may sound bad and my notes may not be a hundred percent what they could be so i will definitely adam i will definitely get back to you um on a second tasting of this when i'm fully <laughs> recovered and not being affected by my illness so um, first of all, what are you guys drinking tonight? Um, wow, so many of you, so many more people are popping in. Uh, Juan, what is up? Guy, what is up? Um, yeah, you guys are all like here right on time. Like I just started like two minutes ago and you're already here. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon, I have not sent Joseph his sample box yet, but I just got five of my sample bottles back from a friend and I was waiting. Honestly, I was putting off buying more sample bottles. So he just gave me those yesterday. So I'm going to Joseph, I'm going to send you some samples, and I'm going to send Brandon's along with it. So, sorry for the delay there. Um, so, the holidays, I, I gave a friend a ton of samples um, before I left for Christmas, and he just now brought it back. So, um, which, no fault to him. I mean, obviously, we've both been traveling, but I, I now have sample bottles to fill up. So, Joseph, uh, shoot me a message later and let me know what I've tried recently that you want to try, because I have lots of open bottles that I want to share things with, or share things with you guys. Uh, what did I miss? Monica! Oh, I almost missed you. Monica, thank you so much for showing up. Uh, good to see you. <laughs> Everyone's like, Monica, Monica, Monica. Uh, if you want to buy more sample bottles and split them. Brandon, maybe. Yeah, I mean, because I could use six more, maybe not 12 more. Uh, guy had a nasty cold too, but for the most part's over it. Having some of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof I got last week. Good pick. Um, no rush, but no rise. Okay, well, the Balboa Rye will not be on your sample list. Um, let's go and get it poured. I've actually only been sipping on, haven't had a bourbon yet today. I'm sipping on ginger ale and, um, some rum. I was finishing off some Sailor Jerry I had, mainly because I just wanted to warm myself up a little bit, and I don't know, I always just drink ginger ale when I'm sick. I know it's more for, like, upset stomachs, but, like, I just, it's always been a thing where I drink ginger ale when I'm sick, so. I, that, that, that soothed my soul this evening, or this, I say this evening, I just got off work, but... <laughs> Um, thank you for hitting the like button, Juan. Um, I, I could be one of those like annoying YouTubers, like make sure to smack. No, I'm not gonna. This is cringy, making me think about it. I'm not gonna say smash that like button, shamash or however people say it. Uh, everyone's getting over being sick. Actually, I um, I heard that it's because most people's immune systems were built up to survive the holiday season, all the traveling, all the family, all the get-togethers, and now that we're like finally relaxing, they're finally it's finally getting caught up with us, and like so many people in my office are sick, so. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's like a post-holiday uh, cold that's going around. Some people in my work have the flu, though, and I am not wanting that. So I think I'm almost like 100% sure mine's just a regular cold. I don't feel that bad. I'm just really congested. So so like I said, my tastes may be a little off. but um, So yeah, so tell us, Adam, now that you're in the chat, and um, if you're watching the replay, you can see the chat over there. Um, I think I'm pointing the right way. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure this isn't mirrored. Um, Adam, tell us about this Riftbusters pick. Um, I'll reference your comment once I get to it. 
but tell us about it. And I, I did see you did another one, an Old Town Road pick. That's pretty cool. I, I love the label on that one. So tell us about your pick. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll read your comment when I'm actually reviewing it. But let's go ahead and try the Balboa Rye. So someone said earlier that they, they didn't know much about it. I think it was Donnie. Let me just find your comment. Just uh, uh, see if you asked a specific question. Okay, yeah, you're just curious about it. So um, you had this from Ian. You do like it. The Balboa Rye, Monica? Yeah, so I'm, I, I did sneak a little taste of it. Um, yeah, what's everyone drinking on? Knob Creek Single Barrel Pick? Of course, it's always my go-to, Brandon. You know that. Old Town Road is so good. Weller Full Proof. Oh, you guys are just like bringing out the good bottles. It's only Thursday. Um, to be sure to take some vitamin C and eat well and get by 100% so you don't get it again. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, yes, I, I had one of those emergency um, packet things yesterday, so <laughs> working on it. So so the Balboa Rye, um, Donnie asked, and I, I know a lot of people may not know much about this. This is a limited release from New Riff, which most a lot of people may not know who New Riff is. I mean, they're a very small craft distillery, growing but small. They are in Kentucky. Um, they put out almost all... I think every single one of their products is a bottle and pro bond product. This is bottled and bond as well, which I didn't even realize. They are just doing all the right things. They're not, there's nothing wrong with sourcing, but they're not sourcing. I think they may have sourced earlier. I literally just learned about them last year. So not going to go into their history because I don't know. Ian, that bourbon guy, or Ian, that new riff guy, could tell you all about new riff. But um, this is their fall 2019 release. Um, it was only $50 and you can only get two and you had to pick it up at the distillery, which is why I'm so thankful I have friends like you guys and like Ian who went to the distillery and got this for me. So, um, so Adam, I'm going to go back to your comment in a second once I get to your pick. Um, but thank you for sending it though. Cause that, that gives me something to go off of. So that way I'm not just like talking out my ass. <laughs> uh, so Brandon, you haven't had, uh, wait, which one? Old fits. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. We need to hang out soon. Hopefully this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. so the Balboa Rye, like I said, limited release, fall 2019. This is using a strain of rye. Let's see if they talk about it on the bot on the back. Oh, they don't. Interesting. It says, made with rare heirloom Balboa rye grain, exclusively grown for New Riff. So I was doing a little bit of research ahead of time, and this strain of rye was very, very popular in America in the 1940s. And it's what a lot of distillers used for their whiskey. I mean, some of you may know, but like the first whiskey in America wasn't bourbon. Rye whiskey was all over the West. It was the drink of choice. So there's a high chance that the grain they're using in this was the same as the one used back then. So love that history aspect of it. And the fact that it was grown just for them. That's really cool. Yeah, so I, I will, Ian, I will read his comment. So yeah, let's... Let's go. If you guys have a question, like specifically for me, um, tag me in the comments. I just do et and then my name just so I don't miss it because I really don't want to miss you guys' questions. But let's go ahead. And, so I have had, I I have tried, I have bought a bottle of their regular bottled and bond rye, not the single barrel. I've tried their single barrel. Ian brought a couple to the It's Bourbon Night meetup a few, a few, um, it was a few months ago. And it was really good. So I've gone through two bottles, I think, of their regular rye. So this is a little different. I don't have it to compare, but I did a review of that a couple weeks ago. Um, you can go just search through my channel. You'll, you'll see a new Riff episode. Hear my thoughts on that. Um, overall, very positive. Love what they're doing at New Riff. So let's... Um, Monica says World War II ruined rye whiskey. They used distilleries to make ethanol. That's true. I remember seeing that in a documentary. I love... I'm like a nerd for these kind of things because like it's something that i never learned about until like i really got into bourbon like the history of whiskey in america i think it's so cool so let's go ahead and uh nose like i said i am a little sick so my nosing may be a little off on this one but the first thing i get on this is almost like a cola note like a not just cola but like a cherry coke um and it's not because i've been drinking no that's ginger ale. that's not even coke because I, I was thinking about making a coke and a rum and coke earlier but no it's almost like a cherry cola um, it is pretty alcohol heavy. I'm about to sneeze. I've been sneezing all day because I'm sick. It's alcohol heavy on the nose. It is 100 proof. It's bottled and bond. So that's to be expected. But it still smells like a rye. Like once you see past the fruitiness, which I love fruitiness on a whiskey, once you get past that, there's those traditional rye notes. Those really bright eucalyptus. I often say spearminty notes that I love on rye. It smells like a rye, so that's a good thing. It's not completely, you know, out of profile for a rye. Um, 
So let's go ahead and like since I since I can't nose things too well, let's go ahead and taste it. Um, how many of you guys first? Well, I guess the question: How many of you guys have tried the new riff, um, Balboa Rye, or do you have a bottle of it? Let me know what you think of it, because I've I've read mixed mixed thoughts on it. Overall, people seem to really like it. Um, so I want to give my thoughts. That's a rye, super upfront. So like I said on, on the on the nose of it, I got the fruit. The fruit was first, and then I got the rye on the tip of the tongue rye <laughs> that like hits you with those bright grassy notes um it's notes that i get on one of these store picks um i'll get to later these really bright notes but it still has almost like a citrus i think what sets it apart from the regular rye is there's a citrus note that i don't typically get on rye i don't think i've ever gotten citrus on a rye so whatever this strain of balboa rye they're using is really fruit forward at least in my opinion and ian i'm curious to see if you and Monica, you've had it too. Um, I'm curious here, do you get that fruitiness, that citrus on the nose or and on the taste? Mostly the taste, honestly. Um, Monica's really missing a Long Island iced tea. There is this really cheap redneck bar in Rock Hill, South Carolina that had, um, I didn't try it this year, but last year for Christmas, there the de night that I went, they were doing like, I think it was $5 Long Island iced teas. But this place made them so strong. I had two of them and I was like, I would say I was done. I should have been done after two, but I was like, oh, I can handle more. I ordered like three and a beer. That was a rough night. But <laughs> I do enjoy a good Long Island iced tea, um, especially the cheap ones, honestly. Because if you do, you, do you really go for like a high end Long Island iced tea? I don't think that's the drink you go when you're going for a high end drink. Um, Monica, I am not going to be able to make Paris live in April, but I hope you guys have the best of times. Uh, can't wait. Can't of the Balboa arrived for my dad. Can't wait to open it. Oh, awesome, Brandon. Yeah, let me know what you think of it once you get it. Uh, really jealous. Wish we. Okay, you guys talk about the pick. Okay, so back to the new riff. Um, I was gonna say back to the new riff, but these are all new riff. Back to the Balboa Rai. Yeah, I, now that I've tasted it, I get a lot more of the fruitiness on the nose. That there's almost like a almost like a strawberry like strawberry is a kind of an odd note i don't think i get that very regularly on whiskey but yeah it's like not really like a cherry because you get cherry a lot on like bourbon but this one's more of like a like a berry like a berry note um with that citrus yeah make a long honest tea with cheaper booze yeah exactly it's it's to get you drunk um welcome justin so yeah you've had the balboa uh rye i think we just said there's only a couple of people in here that have had it but I'm a big fan. I mean, you gotta think this is not only is this a craft distillery. Ian was telling me this earlier. It's a craft distillery, but they're releasing a limited release product for fifty dollars. Yes, you can only get it at the distillery, but fifty dollars. I mean, this is any of their products. I think are one of the best values for bourbon, especially with a craft distillery. Craft distilleries always charge a lot of money for their products. So, yeah, I, I am loving this. Welcome, the Australians are here. What time is it there? So I know it's probably early for you. So he says, sorry I'm late, but it's like early for you. Um, welcome, Lil. Good to see you. Both of these, fortunately. Oh, so you have um, both of... What What else do you have? I have a few different store picks. Do you have Adam's uh, Ghost, Bus Ghost Riff Busters pick? Ian will talk New Riff for hours. Midday. Okay. I just want to make sure it's not like 4 a.m. and you're like waking up to me because... I, I mean, I guess that would be cool too, but... Um... I always get a lot of orange and lemon notes, heavy vanilla cream. Yeah, orange totally. And I, the first time I tried it, I didn't get that orange. Um, but now that I've revisited it, there's so much citrus there. Then I, I, I really do like that. Butterscotch on the past, long finish. Yeah, I was telling Ian, when Ian asked me, like, how do you like it? The finish on this Balboa rye is one of the longest finish I've ever had on a rye. And it's only 100 proof. It's not cast strength. It's 100 proof. It's like, at first, it's like, oh, it's just a typical rye. But then you get those citrus, those berries. And then it just keeps going. I swear the finish, it just is one of the longest ones I've ever, like I said, I've ever had on a rye. And I'm even comparing it to cast strength rye. So, uh, 13 viewers. Oh, thank you guys so much. I, this is awesome. That's like almost a new, probably a new record. I feel like at one point I had like a ton of viewers because I think I posted a link somewhere. Um, but thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, I would love if you could subscribe. Um, I don't know where the button is now. I think it's down there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I go live every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, which is my time, or 9 p.m. Eastern. 
uh, do lots of different reviews and do like I do videos occasionally too. So welcome if you're new. I know I'm seeing a lot of new faces here. So just want to get that out there. Um, I'd love to hang out with you guys more often. A lot of these guys are with me every week. So so good. I'm so glad to meet new people. Honestly, that's why I do this. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything negative to say about this new riff, Balbo Arai, other than why can't I get it? Why can't I get more? I want it so bad. Um, I definitely prefer this over their regular rye. Now I'm sure there are some single barrel store picks of their rye that are as good or better. Um, I've tried I've tried samples from Ian, but I would like to compare this to like some other picks because it's not that far off from regular rye. It just has a lot more fruitiness that I, I really am digging. So cheers to New Riff. This is a wonderful special release. Um, and I hope they do more like this. I'll definitely be on their list to whatever the next release is. I'll definitely buy it and I'll probably get Ian to ship it to me again. So um, yeah, let's, let's finish this off so we can move into our store picks. Joseph knows a couple guys. Well, Joseph, you need to introduce me to those guys because I don't know them. Yeah, so let's, so if Adam, Adam is still here, I want to pour one of these other picks that I've already opened just to kind of be a, almost like a comparison because one of them is way out there flavor profile wise, like completely off the charts, completely something I've never had before. The other is more traditional new riff. So I do want to have a glass of that when I'm reviewing your pick because I want to have something to go back to, so Oh yeah. Okay. So the only Nashville pick I have is the um, Riff Busters here. So I do not have the Old Town Road. I've heard great things, mostly from you guys today. <laughs> uh, so let's move the Balboa over here so I don't accidentally pour it again. All their bottles, I love their bottle design, but they all look so similar. And that's one of these, which is the one that has the weird note? Let me, let me see this right now. Just be honest. I will be honest. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make sure because I don't want to drink the one with the weird note and then compare it to yours, because that, that just wouldn't be fair. That's the weird note one. We'll talk about that one in a second. This one, the weird one with the weird note, is the Seal Box Bourboner Pick, round three. And I, I was very misled by this one, so I'll just tell you that. <laughs> I'm not going to chug it. No, sorry, Monica. Uh, you can bring my bottle of new picked by the distillery and compare to yours. Yeah, would love that. That would be awesome. Yeah, so that one is, I set it on the floor. Not that it's, like, worthy of, like, we'll talk about that later. So, that was the weird one. Let me rinse my glass. The proof on the weird one is 110.5. Um, actually, both of these are 110.5, but the Rift Busters, what is this? Oh, it's, it's 110.1 on the Rift Busters. So it's slightly different. Musky is an understatement. I'll say that. Uh, I'll get into that story in a minute because based on the website, there was two on the website and I bought both of them. Both of these are from that same website. One was supposed to be labeled as like grassy, whatever, but that's not the one I get the grassy note on. So... Okay, so let me pour the traditional New Riff single barrel that I really enjoy. Oh, you guys are making me want this Old Town Road. If there's any of that left, Adam, you may have to hit me up because I am intrigued. <laughs> the pig you have is 111.9. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm going to have this in the glass. I, I, I do want to mention it before. Let's go ahead and break the seal on this, though. Are you guys ready for my thoughts on the Riff Busters? I love, by the way, if you guys don't know, I love the wax that they did. And first of all, I'm not even one that's even like a sucker for stickers. Like I know some people obsess over stickers. This sticker, sticker is so sexy. He wrote my name on it. It's in glow in the dark ink. The wax is glow in the dark. I just, you guys went above and beyond. And I think that's awesome. Oh, Jason's here. What's up? Oh, I thought I missed it. Okay. Yes. Balboa Rye. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, gonna do some store picks though i'm really excited about trying a few of these wow i just thought we hit 19 viewers that is definitely a record thank you guys so much if you're like i said if you're new here i'd love if you can come back and hang out with us um what is the best way to open this i'm pretty sure i need to use like a knife or something 
I, I'm gonna use some scissors. I didn't plan for this. I didn't think about the fact that there's not like a pull tab. <laughs> okay. I just don't want to ruin this beautiful wax, but I may have to just to get into it. Okay. I may have to ruin this because I didn't plan for this. I, I'm not used to having to undo some wax like this. Yeah, I may have to take the wax off, but it's okay. I'm okay. I did not buy this bottle to look at it. The pull tab and plastic wrap are hard to get to. Cut, cut it. Okay, let me. <laughs> one second, you guys. <laughs> I'm about to circumcise myself. Too late for that. I just, I hate to ruin it. I feel like I'm just scratching at it right now. Oh, I didn't, I, I need to watch the replay of your stream. I missed it, um, Jason. I really don't want to break this, but I'm going to have to rip it open. Wait, I found a way to remove it, and then I think we're good. Because it'll keep it intact. I'm like sweating. <laughs> I'm like breaking out of sweat right now. I didn't plan for this. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch that, um, Jason. I, I missed it, but I'm going to have to catch the replay. Okay, we're making progress. You guys are just gonna watch me struggle, aren't you? <laughs> this is what having one arm sucks because I can't, that's not an excuse, that's just a stupid excuse. Okay, here we go, we got it. Phew, I was like starting to get nervous there. It's like going on stage and forgetting your line or something. <laughs> okay, progress. I may have lost the wax, Adam. But <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, Monica, just laugh at my misfortune. Um, it's okay, though. I got several photos of it, so. <laughs> Here's what's left of the wax. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Sorry. Sorry to completely... <laughs> I'm like, bro I literally broke out of sweat because I got nervous. Um, sorry to destroy your masterful work with that. Monica, if you don't know this, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry to completely destroy that for you guys. Whew, okay, where were we? I missed so many comments. <laughs> okay, calm down. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure other people have struggled way less with that. I just, not only do I have one arm. Did you really, Monica? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I thought you, I thought you all knew that. <laughs> um, if you don't know that, hey guys, I have one arm. Um, <laughs> so I'm just using that as an excuse for not being able to open that. I just didn't plan ahead and I should cut it with a knife. And I am bleeding. Why am I bleeding? I guess I cut myself with the scissors. Wow, you guys are literally just watching me torture myself tonight. <laughs> <sighs> it's it's I need this whiskey real bad. It doesn't hurt, so we're okay there. So <laughs> scissors are dangerous. Wow, you guys are just watching me struggle tonight. Blood sacrifice required to open. I love that, Adam, and I'm gonna stick with that story. <laughs> if anyone tries this bottle, I'll let them know. Like, hey, just so you know, just to let you know what I sacrificed to get into this. So yeah, so we're gonna make sure I don't bleed all over the table. <laughs> Um, it's okay, it's not bleeding much, it's just it spread because I wasn't paying attention. Pour some bourbon on it. Eww, that hurt. that sounds painful. Okay, let's drink some whiskey. Let's stop <laughs> let's stop failing at life and drink some freaking whiskey. Oh, love that sound. Okay, the viewers stuck around. You guys didn't abandon me <laughs> when I'm like literally cutting myself on camera. Um not literally, that's oh my god, it's bleeding a lot. <laughs> it's not bleeding a lot, it's just like it's at like the crease of my finger, so every time I bend my finger, it like bleeds, so. Okay, I'll try to not let you guys see that. <laughs> let's drink some freaking whiskey. Okay, let's go ahead and nose this um, new riff. The Riff Busters. 20 viewers, 21 viewers. Oh my God, you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, do not feel bad that you're laughing. I think it's hilarious that I didn't plan for that. So yeah, you guys learned a lot about me tonight. Um, I'm not good with scissors. Okay. Let's go ahead and nose this new riff. Um, 
Oh, Adam referred you. Lee, welcome. Um, yeah, I'm doing the Rift Busters pig now. Now that I've completely destroyed the wax and cut myself, I'm finally getting to drink it. So let's go ahead and nose uh, the Rift Busters pig. Now, the info on this, for those of you that may not have it, um, God, I'm bleeding so much. It's okay, though. It is. Uh, it was distilled on November 5th, 5th of 2015 and barreled on November 6th of 2019. So right at four years old. Um, what some will do to drink a good bourbon exactly <laughs> uh, so I'm ready so ready to enjoy this one that smells lovely I, that so I thought the nose in this other one that I had was really good the other one's a little earthy this one though that smells like a very very well aged bourbon I would not guess it's four years old it highest views when I bleed. I know, Monica. Maybe I, maybe I should do a different kind of show. <laughs> that smells so caramely, so oaky. It smells like a much, much older bourbon. Now, I want to scroll up to what Adam... I, he, I asked him earlier to describe what, what this whiskey is and, like, behind the pick. So I'm going to go up and find that if I can find it. I should have tagged it. So here we go. So they've done two private barrel picks so far. The first one was the Old Town Road, was done back in April, and Rift Busters was in October. Best part of doing barrel picks with the group is getting a solid group of people together to choose very, very special bottle. Um, they talked a little bit about this one. He said, um, our Rift Busters pick was chosen the week of Halloween, so we went with a Ghostbusters theme. We had the glass etched with Slimer, waxed to the top of the neon green wax, which I destroyed, and a fun sticker. Yeah, so... Um, I love this. Where is the glass edge? Did I miss that? Maybe I missed it. I don't know. Anyways, I don't want to bleed all over your bottle. <laughs> thank you guys for the likes. We're at 11 likes. Again, new records. We're hitting all the records. Adam, thank you for inviting people. Um, when we picked that, we thought it knows and tasted similar to a good Russell's pick. Interesting. I do get a lot of Russell's on there. Um, that... that I mean, I always get so much oak on Russell's. I have to drink it to earn the ghost. That's so cool, Adam. I love that. Hidden behind the sticker. You guys you guys just really went all out with this, and I am loving it. Like I said, I'm not only a sticker whore, but like that's, that's staying in my collection. Even when I drink this whiskey, I am keeping this bottle because it's so cool. You guys did such an awesome job with that. Yeah, on the nose, I, I, do, get, I do get some of those berry notes that I was getting on the Balboa Rye. Um... And it does, I mean, like you said, it does, it smells like a Russell's. It has that fruitiness um, that you get on a good Russell's pick. So let's go ahead and taste it. Cheers, you guys. The, a lot of the people that did the pick are here in the chat. Um, sorry I bled all over your bottle. <laughs> but cheers to what I can only assume is a wonderful pick. Wow. That drinks... You said this was what, 110? 110.1 proof. It drinks higher, but I like that. I love high proof whiskey. No, no, Adam, I do not hate it. Um, I'm just trying not to bleed all over everything. I love high proof whiskey, and I think it drinks a little hot, but it carries with it that strong oak, really, really powerful oak flavor that I love. It reminds me of an older, older bottle, and I am a sucker for those. <laughs> Um, let's go back and revisit it. That's really, really fascinating. Um, this is completely different than any new riffs that I've had. Um, Ian, you have more experience than I do, but it drinks like an older bourbon, only four years old. I cannot believe that. I feel like they're, they're pulling something over our, over our heads. This is definitely older than four years old. I'm flushing slightly. I think it's cause I'm bleeding out. <laughs> That's really nice. I mean, probably, no, not probably. I've only had three picks of this so far. Definitely my favorite pick I've ever had. It's, um, oh, the heat, I thought you meant me. Like, I was, I was like, dying. <laughs> um, yeah, so it it has those characteristic fruity notes that I, I got on the Balboa Rye. 
but there's a lot of depth here and it's taken me like i said i am sick so i apologize for not getting as detailed as i normally am with notes but i am really feeling like this is one of the best i mean i'm getting so the first time i had new riff i don't know if i i have to rewatch my review from new riff the first time i had their bourbon just their regular bottle and bond bourbon i was blown away like i was not expecting anything that good from a craft distiller so this is bringing back those memories and i've been drinking new riff for about like six months now so this is reminding me of everything i loved about what this distillery is doing and i think this is probably the perfect expression of their bourbon that i've ever had so um i believe they are a high right mash bill I, I um someone else can speak to that than me but this it this drinks like a hundred dollar whiskey I'll, I'll be completely honest um I have had $100 whiskeys that's not as good as this. Um, some of you guys know one of those that everyone loves that I don't like. I think this drink's like one of the higher-end whiskeys I've ever had. Favorite craft for store? Sure, Justin. I cannot say I disagree with that. I, I totally think they're probably my favorite craft distiller because even the ones that are sourcing and doing unique finishing, they're not putting out such a quality product, such a well-rounded, four years old. I mean, I know Bottle and Bond is like just, for some people, it may just be like a label, but I think it's that attention to detail that sets them apart. And when they're doing Bottled and Bond, um, of course, the, sorry, the single barrels aren't Bottle and Bond. I may have said that earlier. They are not, but they kind of follow the same standards. I mean, they're basically the same stuff. Everything they're making is technically Bottle and Bond, but they're bottling the single barrels at high proof, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I want to save a little bit in this glass because I do want to compare it to the other picks I have. But cheers to the Nashville Bourbon Society for a wonderful pick. Um, and I can't wait to try more from them. So <laughs> if you're going to use me an ad, that'll be my testimony right there. Um, just cut that part out. I'll send you the clip. <laughs> yeah, so thank you guys for stopping in. I imagine a lot of you guys are from this Bourbon Society that did this pick. Um, keep up what you're doing. And I'm very interested in future picks. So hit me up, Adam. I, I will do the... I, I will get you the money <laughs> um yeah that was awesome i want to put the lid back on it but it's kind of stuck in the wax so i'm just gonna put this upside down on it right now just so it doesn't aerate too much but yeah cheers to adam i want to try the second one this isn't the off one the off one is down here that'll be the last we will save that for the very end the second one though slides five dollars on the table <laughs> yeah no this video was not sponsored <laughs> So this second one is another single barrel pick. This one was done by also, okay, so this one's technically seal box. The difference is though, they did two picks and they were two different teams. One was called the New Riff Club pick and one was the seal box team pick. The New Riff Club pick, sorry, <laughs> so I'm sponsored by Brazo with Adonix. The New Riff Club pick was the one that I thought was going to be the most vegetal based on the description on the website. I thought it was going to be earthy, but honestly, this new riff club pick, it's not as mind blowing to me personally as, um, Adam's pick that we just tried, but it's probably the most solid new riff pick I've had other than Adam's. Of course it's, it's a little like earthy on the note, like on the nose, you get a little bit more of the like the, I guess not really even like barrel bitters. It's more of like actual dirt, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it is earthy. That's for sure. But I may have mixed up my pores because I'm pretty sure this one was the earthy one. I thought the other one was. Hold on. Give me one second. I thought this was the bad bottle. I'm telling you guys wrong info. This may be the good one. I just, it was my first bourbon of the night, so I may have been mistaken. This one's definitely the earthy one. Hold on. Let's go back to the seal box pick. Yeah, <laughs> that one is the off one to me, and we'll talk about that. I'll get to that in a second, but I want to talk about this pick that I like. Take two. <laughs> Um, give me the Old Town Road. Yes, please. I love everything they're doing. This is the Sealbox pick. 
The one that I said earlier was the bad one. It's not the bad one. I do, Brandon, I do. No, I didn't get the bottoms mixed up. I just thought that this was the weird one earlier, but it was actually the other way around, so. Not that bad, bad of a slip. I've made worse mistakes on the show, trust me. This is the good one. This one, okay, so I, I still have the Nashville Bourbon Society pick here. This one, way better on the nose. This one is so forward with that oakiness. This seal box pick, which is also a four-year-old, four-year, one-month-old, is more of like the lighter notes. Like there's um, earthy or pine and mint. Interesting, Ian. I will get back to that one. I, wanna, I do want to review the one that I like the best first, though. This one is not earthy at all in the nose. It's traditional bourbon, classic, not jumping out of the glass like the um, Nashville Bourbon Society pick, but it's still a really nice flavor. Yeah, this, honestly, so my honest thoughts on the seal box pick are the one that's round three. Um, this is the, I never got, I never fixed that exposure issue. The round three seal box regular pick I think is a great expression of what New Riff is doing. I don't think it is that set apart from what they're doing normally with their regular bourbon in the way that the um, Riff Busters pick was. I think that's like an outlier of exceptional whiskey. This just tastes like a really good pick from New Riff. So no dissing on Sealbox at all. I think that's a really good pick and I'm very, very happy with it. This is the bottle I've been nursing because I really like this bottle, so I've been drinking it very slowly. Now this new one, I have to drink that even slower, so. Yeah, so big thumbs up on big bloody thumbs up. <laughs> it's not that, it looks really bad right now, it's just dried blood on it, so. Thumbs up to Sealbox for their round three pick. Um, really do love that bottle, and like I said, I've, I've been nursing it. It's been hanging out in my collection for a while. Um, just gotta find a, the cork. Well, fun. Oh, wait, it's already on it. It's getting that point in the night, you guys. <laughs> um, so let's move on to the bottle that I've been not dreading. I, I don't want to set it up like it's a terrible bottle. It's just extremely, extremely different. And I would go to their website, but I'm pretty sure they pulled it because it sold out. I'm just going to check just in case they, they have the description still up. Sorry about that outside my window. <laughs> because they described it in a way that, like, at first I was like, what? Here we go. Here's how they described it. Um, the nose is immediately filled with grassy and vegetal notes. There are a lot of savory and leather notes. The taste moves to some traditional sweetness, but leans to fresh tobacco leaves and spice. The finish packs a punch of dry cedars and other savory notes. So... Oh, thank you, Mash and Drum. That 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 really does mean a lot. Um, coming from you because your show is so fantastic, and I really need to catch your live from last night because I haven't watched the replay yet. I've been very busy. I have a lot of new projects at work, and it's really stressful right now. So, have not had time to catch your streams live lately. So I need to catch up on that. So, like they said, vegetal notes. So that's why I was like, wait a minute, that wasn't what I thought it was. So this one is the weird one. We're finally moving on to it. <laughs> Sorry for the slip up earlier when I thought I had the good one, but I didn't. So this one is the strangest notes I've ever gotten on a bourbon. And that's why I said I have to describe this later because it's so weird. It's something like I've never had before. This one is, I mean, I don't even know if I've ever had a whiskey that is as vegetal. Like that note sounds weird, but you gotta think it's like a mossy must. It's Joseph. Thank you. I, I forgot I had super chats on. <laughs> I should have been promoting that earlier. Um, thank you, Joseph. No bottles to chug. Last time, last time you gave me a super chat, I um, chugged a bottle of something. So I'm not going to do that tonight. Thank you, Joseph. Cheers and happy new year to you. I don't want to cheers. I'll cheers you with Adam's, the rest of Adam's pour. Cheers. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Um, I Patreon keeps, I accidentally started to sign up for a Patreon um, creator account. But then I was like, you know what? I don't really need a Patreon. I don't get that many viewers. 
And, but it's been begging me constantly. It's like, it's like, set up your thing, lock in your rate. Hey, are you a creator? Hey, set up your Patreon. I'm like, no, I don't like, if I had a Patreon, I want to be really thought out about it. I want to give people extra rewards. I want to stick by those rewards that I offer people. I, I want to do like either challenge coins and stuff like that. So I have a lot of figuring out to do before I even consider that and a lot of growing to do. So, and I know you guys support so many other channels. I support like so many whiskey channels on Patreon right now. So I don't want to just add the, add to all the other great channels that are doing things. I think they're doing it better than me. I'm just having a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, I'm supposed to cheers to this bottle. How much for a Jaeger bomb? <laughs> How much for a Long Island iced tea night? Oh, Monica, don't that you don't have to ask me twice. I, I could do that without a donation. No, I, no donations required. I do appreciate it though, Joseph. Um, yeah, Elmer Chili is very hard to come by. I got one bottle of it and I haven't opened it yet. So, yeah, he does. I I think I'm only the dollar level on you, um, Jason. It's because I'm trying to budget myself. I've changed up my levels on like so many different Patreons because people have changed up what they're offering. So I need to go back and revisit um, <laughs> Sarah's thing, Monica. Uh, yeah, no, I, I need to. Well, my thing was I had a bottle of neutral grain spirit whiskey that was $5 for a bottle, like a whole bottle that was $5. That was my super chat chug bottle. <laughs> I may need to bring that back though, if Joseph's going to be so generous. Um, but back to the, maybe, no, that's rude. Not gonna compare it, but maybe this Riff Club pick will be my new chug bottle. It's just so weird. Now that being said, I'll drink it. It's just like drinking dirt, like mulch, like mossy. Like this almost tastes like it was a bottle, a barrel that was just stored in the back of a Rick house for like it doesn't even have that. So I would say it tastes like a really old barrel, but it doesn't have that oak note. It just has the mossy, moldy. I don't want to say moldy because that, that's very off-putting. But it has a very mossy, weird note, and I'm I I don't hate it. It's unique, but it's something I've never had on a whiskey before. Even on like scotches, like scotches have a little bit more of that peatiness or whatever. But this one is just a really weird one. So if you guys get your hands on the Riff Club pick of this um, from Sealbox, like there's, it, it's not their, it's not their regular pick. It's their Riff Club pick. I wouldn't say buy a bottle, but try it because it's so odd to me. Sip of the bacon bourbon. I do still have the bacon bourbon one. <laughs> that might be a good one. That's just ugh. That's a very badly flavored whiskey that I wanted so much more from. See, y'all are patrons for everyone else. That's why I don't want to. I don't want to create a Patreon because I don't want you guys to feel like you have to support me. I'm a much, much smaller channel than all these other ones out there. Um, I just do it for fun. So maybe eventually I'll do a Patreon. But right now I'm like, I just want to have fun with you guys. Yeah, like my videos have ads on them. But like, I look forward to these live streams every single week. And even though I'm sick right now, I'm still doing it because I want to hang out with you guys. So, And I'm suffering through some mossy, moldy bourbon for you. So. Yeah, so I don't want to diss this club that picked this, this new Riff Club. But you know how you hear about a lot of whiskey clubs that do a pick that is... Um, they try to pick something that is different versus good. Like, I feel like I hear about a lot of stores. They're like, oh, this one tastes wildly different than all the others. Let's pick... That is our store pick. And usually I think that's a bad idea because... If you're doing something so off flavor profile, you're going to turn people off. Like me, if this had been my only store pick of New Riff, I would have been like, whoa, what? Like, that's so weird. And I think that's very off-putting. Um, but I think sometimes, yeah, unless it's a different good, Monica, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's ways, if you're like, see something that highlights a certain note that you wouldn't normally highlight, that's a good note. I'm all for that, and it, it would make me appreciate a bourbon a bit more. But when you're highlighting some weird, like they they even just this is their description: the nose is immediately filled with grassy and vegetal vegetal notes. Is that what you look for when you're looking for a good bourbon? 
that's not what I look for. I mean, maybe hints of that, that earthiness, I'm totally okay with. But when you, the first thing you say, the nose is filled with grassy and vegetal. To me, that's that's kind of off-putting. And yeah, that doesn't sound good. Exactly. Vomit emoji. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it, it tastes exactly like it sounds. It's mossy. And I don't want to spend any more time with this one because I don't like it. Perfectly honest, I think it's a, a it's a weird pick. And I don't regret buying it, but I'm like, this is not my... If I'm showcasing New Rift to somebody, this is not what I'm going to pour them. So, I'm going to finish it off. So, this... <laughs> I'll finish this thanks to Joseph Super Chat. This is my my shot, my chug of the night. Dusty mushrooms. Exactly, Scythe. Yeah. It's so weird saying Scythe. Because my old channel name on YouTube when I started like, God, 12 years ago was Slythe66 or Slith66. So I feel like I want to say my old name <laughs> whenever I whenever I read it. Avoid vegetal notes and bourbon. Yes, they're not all winners. Very true, Adam. So I have a little bit left of Adam's pick right here. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions about New Riff? Um, if Ian's still in the chat, he can answer them. <laughs> Any questions for me, future stream ideas? we are got like about 10 minutes left of the stream, maybe a little more. Happy to answer any questions, and we're going to revisit one of these. I think I might go back to the Balboa Rye, honestly. Um, after trying these vegetal notes of these weird bourbons, I think we're going to go back to the New Riff. So if anyone missed it, um, I'm going to revisit the New Riff Rye. Where are you for? Oh, Ian's here. Did you want to go? Did you want to go love on Saturday? Well, Brandon, I'm not sure if Francesca would be okay with that, but yeah, um, we might go live. But Monica, if you're yeah, Monica's still here. I think y'all are planning a Google Hangout um, Saturday night. I if Brandon is here, I would definitely. That would be so much fun. That would be so much fun to do a Google Hangout with you guys and be there with Brandon. That We would get way too drunk, but I'm okay with it. I don't have Old Town Road, Joseph. Um, Adam said he might hook me up. I don't need a full bottom. Bottom. I don't need a full bottle, Adam. That was a Freudian slip right there. Um, just a sample is fine. I, I, I do really want to try it, so. Hang out at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's 6 p.m. <laughs> That's 6 p.m. our time. Brandon, if you're around, doesn't do that. You guys, you guys are ridiculous. Um, Brandon, if you're around on Saturday, if you're able to make it, I would love to do the Google Hangout with you here in person. You're going to get me so drunk, but I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> um, someone asked, how does the, the Balboa rye differ on the palate? That's a very good question. Um, I'm about to get into that. Guy says, um, I got a bottle of standard New Rift bourbon. I've not tasted it in a while, so I'll try it again this weekend. Yeah, I think New Rift, they're one of the best craft distilleries out there. They're putting out amazing products. And yeah, even their basic stuff, I'm, I'm super impressed with it. Um, midday in Australia, so you're, you're in. Yeah, so this is the Balboa Rye. On the nose, it is very similar to that, that vegetal, vegetal note. Um... But it's more traditional rye, more of that eucalyptus, spearmint, grassy. So there's a, do you guys get what I'm saying when I say that, like the difference between a grassy note and like a mossy note? I think grassy is like fresh cut grass, very light, very fragrant. Whereas the mossy note of that pick is more like earthy, dark, like mulch. I, I keep saying mulch. I don't know if that's the appropriate word, but yeah, so this, this is very very good on the nose i don't want you guys to think that like i'm comparing it to that pick that was odd it's different so the person that asked me to compare it honestly it's that's that's what i think a lot of people don't understand about rise is a lot of the rise you're buying like the pikesville rise the rittenhouse rise um old forester rye which is one of my favorites for the price you're getting something that's like a low rye rye New Riff, on the other hand, they are a high rye rye. They are a 95% rye. Um, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. 
I don't know if it's this one or the regular rye, where it's 95% um, rye and 5% malted rye. I'm not going to, don't quote me on that, but they are a high, high, high rye rye. So it's going to be different. It's not going to be like a bourbon. That's for sure. Bourbon's 51% corn or more. Um, this is 95% rye. 95.5, yes. So... This, though, yeah, I will say that this Balboa rye, if you come across a bottle for a decent price, which I'm not sure if they still sell at a distillery. Ian, you probably know more than I do, but I think this Balboa rye is a step above their standard rye. It's a step above a step above their regular single barrel rye. Now, I, I can't say if it's a step above some picks of single barrel rye because I'm sure there are some exceptional picks out there, so... We yeah, and Ryan are going to even call Rai Rai. Um, Joseph, that, that's why I shut up, because I don't remember if it's a malted rye or a malted barley. Ian? Justin? Question mark? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I know, I know. Why didn't they do a um, Russell's rye pick with um, Matthew McConaughey? Okay, so Adam just answered the question. That's, that's where I was getting confused, because, Adam, I am a huge, huge fan of MGP's rye. I buy Dickel rye. Monica knows I like the Dickel. I buy Dickel rye all the time, and it's 95 rye, 5% malted barley, and I think it's one of the best mixer ryes I've ever bought. So <laughs> that's where my confusion was coming. So it is 100% rye. Thank you for that clarification. And it, it, it shows. I mean, this is... <laughs> Monica likes the Dickel too. See, I, I knew you'd be around to <laughs> get that joke, but... I mean, Balboa Rye, I mean, not that these are even comparable. I don't know why I would even compare these, but I'm going to do it anyways. I think both the Balboa Rye, as an example for the best rye that New Riff can make, and the Riff Busters uh, Nashville Bourbon Society pick of their bourbon are the best representations of what New Riff is doing right. So if you have someone that doesn't think, they're like, oh, they're a craft distillery, oh, they're putting out a young product, even though four years is not young. I think these are the two that you need to introduce them to if you get your hands on them, because this bourbon will blow anyone's mind that's serious about bourbon. It it will stand out as, uh, I mean, not really a flavor bomb. It's not like a Stag Junior. It doesn't like punch you in the face, but the flavors are the some of the most balanced I've ever got on a bourbon, let alone a craft distillery. So. That was the last of my Riff Busters, but I will be enjoying this bottle for a really long time. Um, is Dickel Rye a top or bottom shelf? It's a bottom, and that's why I enjoy it so much. So with that, <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap up for tonight. Again, thank you guys for breaking some records. Um, I'm sorry for bleeding all over your camera. I might need a not safe for work filter on the stream. But seriously, you guys, thanks for hanging out. Um, Familiar faces, new faces, everyone. It was such a fun time. And I will be live again next Thursday, hopefully in better health and better health. And we'll do something different. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet, but but I, I have a couple ideas brewing. So thank you guys for hanging out. Cheers. And I'm here to help you drink good whiskey and new riff in general and Riff Busters pick. Fantastic whiskey. Have a wonderful night and drink more whiskey. Oh, God, I, I, I'm trying to avoid the whole it's very night thing. Just drink good whiskey. <laughs> Bye, you guys.